Hey everybody, welcome to our second video on writing to sequential files with Microsoft Access VBA. This time we're going to write to a sequential file using the file system object. Let's head on over to a form that I've built for this. Alright, here. Alright, this form looks very similar to the last video I did on writing to sequential files. So before we even get to the code, I'm going to go ahead and fill in a couple of text boxes here. Here at the top of the form we have a, a choose folder button. This is the folder we want to write our new file to. I'm going to choose that folder and we'll fill it in there, the top text box. I'm going to fill in a file name here, file1.txt. And then let's fill in some strings to write to our file. Let's say string1 and string2. That's very imaginative to write. All right, let's take a look at the code we've got set up for this form. At the top here is our click event for that folder picker button we just had. So first we check to see that the text box is going to hold our folder name that we chose is empty. Then we're going to fill in our text box on the form with the results of a function call, get file folder. We're passing it two parameters here, a string for folder and then a string for the title. Choose a folder to hold our new file. Let's take a look at that function that's over here. Get file folder. The first value we passed is folder. It's going to go in string type and then our title will go in string title. So down here we test the string type, we've passed it folder, so we're going to populate this string with MSO file dialog folder picker. We get down here to declaring our file dialog, set f dialog equal to application.file dialog, and we tell it which type we want. We want a folder picker. We just chose that value there. And we down here to our with statement here, if with our object with f dialog, we set our title. We allow multi select equal to false and we give them a starting folder to make things easy for us. And then we show it. And if the user has chosen a folder and we did, we will select it here and put it in our function value or return our function is returning a string. So we'll put the folder we chose in our function value and return that to our call right here and put it in our text box on the form. Okay, so back over to our form, we have filled in a file name for our new file and we have two strings we're going to write to it. Below here we have two buttons. These are two different methods for writing to the file. Okay, so let's take a look at the code behind the write it one button. Over here, command right click. There's our click event for that leftmost button. And this method we're going to use the open text file method of the file system object to either create a new file or open an existing file. We have some constants up here at the top we're going to look at in just a minute. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to check our form to see if we have both a file name and a folder, destination folder filled in. If we don't we're going to tell our users with a message box that you must do that before you can proceed. Okay we need to know the file name we want to use and then where to save the file. After that we're going to concatenate our folder with a slash and the file name into a string variable called file name. That's going to hold the file name we're going to create. And we're going to dimension the two objects we're going to use. Now I'm using early binding here up here in references. I have a reference to Microsoft Scripting Runtime which means I'll have access to all the IntelliSense for these objects um, while I'm writing my code. We don't have to do it with early binding. We can use the late binding which I have an example down here below which, which you can use. But here we have a, we're going to dimension FSO, uh, an object, as a file system object, and we're also going to dimension TS as a text stream object. Below here we're going to actually create our object, set FSO equal to a new file system object. From here is where we create or open our file. The file system object uses text streams to write to text files. Okay, so we're going to set a text stream equal to FSO open text file. Now open text file takes four parameters. The first parameter is the file name that you want to either open or create. The second parameter is the IO mode. So we have up here for reading, for writing, or for appending. To so like in the other video we had on writing, this choice affects what happens when you open an existing file. If you open an existing file for writing, you're going to wipe out whatever content, whatever data was in that file to begin with and replace it with the data you write in this session. Now if you don't want to wipe out that old data, then you'll want to open it for appending. 
and then in that case you'll be adding content or adding data to the end of the file. Now, if your file doesn't exist, you can open it either way, for writing or for appending. The next parameter, open text file, is the create parameter, and you give it a Boolean value of true or false. If you specify true here, what happens is if the file does not exist, open text file will create the file for you. If you put a false here, if the file does not exist, it will not create a new file for you, and you get an error. The last parameter here is the format parameter. You give it one of these values, try state use default, try state true, try state false. Try state true means you're going to create a Unicode text file. Try state false means you'll create an ASCII. And then of course the try state use default is you're going to create whatever the default is for your system. So if you're in a culture that needs the extra byte in, in for each character, then you're going to definitely, then I'm sure you know that already, you want to make sure you use Unicode. If you don't need it, then you can use ASCII. If you think your application is going to ever be ported to or used by a culture that needs that extra byte for each character, then, then definitely go ahead and use the Unicode value there. But after we have opened slash or created our text file, then we simply write to it using the text stream object. And in this example, I'm going to use the write line method. There's also a write method. We also have a write blank line method, I believe. Um, I'm going to use those. I'm going to use the right line method. What the right line method does is it'll write whatever you have here in this string, and it automatically gives you a carriage return or end of end of record marker after this variable. So what you see when we write to this file is two records for the first time, and what we have on our form, which is string one and string two. So over here, let's drag my folder window over here. We are in the test rights folder, which is what I chose here in my folder. And it's gonna click right at one and come back over here. And we have, whoop, it popped, over on the, popped up on the window here. There you go. We have string one and string two on separate lines. So let's close that. Okay, so now let's change these to uh, string three, whoops, string three and string four and click write it one again. Now, and back in our code over here, we are opening this file for writing, so we should be replacing the contents in that file with the new contents, right? Let's find my folder of window. There we go, and open that file again. So here we have string three and string four. We did not append. So we can go back to our code window and change this to for appending. Okay, I'm gonna save. Come back over here, let's do string five, string six, click our button again, find our folder window, here we go. Open the file, so there we go, three, four, five, and six. We've appended to the existing file. So let's close this, come back over here. Now we have a second button over here, which is has a, a different method behind it and a different method of writing to a sequential file. So let's head over to our code window again that click event is down here. So in this click event, we're going to do it slightly differently. We're going to use the file system objects create text file method, followed by an open as text string method for opening the file. And instead of doing a right line, we're going to use the right. So see how all these different things work. So here's our click event. Everything starts pretty much the same. We're checking to see if our file name and our folder are filled in. And before I go any further, let's head back over here and let's change this file name, okay, to a different file name before I forget, okay. And let's change these back to one and two again. I'm going to come back over here in a hurry and, and click the button and forget to change those. Okay, we're making sure these object, these uh, values are filled in, and if they're not, we're going to warn our users they need to fill those in first. Again, we're going to assemble the file name that we're going to create the same way we did before, which is just simple string concatenation. We're going to dimension a file system object. This time we're going to dimension a file object and a text stream object. We're going to set FSO equal to a new file system object, just like we did before. And right above here is the, the late binding method, where if you did not want to set a reference to the, uh, the Windows scripting runtime, you could just create FSO as an object and then use this method to create FSO. Below here, we're going to use the FSO create text file method. It takes one parameter, the file name you want to create. Now, 
again back to what we said before about files already existing if you were to specify if you were just to give the command create text file and you gave it a file name that already existed what will happen is the old file will be wiped out and the new one will be created in its place so you will lose whatever data you had in the original file in this case what I've done is I've wrapped an if statement around it and used if not FSO file exists giving it the file name with the file name if the file does not exist we're going to use this create method to create it if it does exist we're going to leave it alone okay below here we're going to get a reference to the file okay the open as text stream method we're going to use below is a method of the file object so we're going to set a reference to the file Let's set fil equal to fso get file and feed it the file name so fil now holds a reference to the file that we've either just created or just gotten a reference to okay and below here is where we need to use the open as text stream method so we're going to set our text stream equal to the file object open as text stream method it takes only two parameters this time one is the IO mode again we're going to use for writing or for appending and they work the same way as it did in the other method okay if the file exists and you open it for writing you're going to wipe out your previous content and replace it with new content if the file exists and you use for appending then you'll be adding to the end of the file okay? and then it also takes the format parameter and the same thing again it's uh, ASCII or Unicode or system default and I'm giving it the value of ASCII in this case and then to write to the file we're going to use our text stream object the write method and we're going to give it the text value from our first text box and our second text box so let's head back over to our form and click write it to open up our folder again and there's file 2 we just created and here we see that the write method does not automatically give us a new line okay the write method just keeps on going one after the other let's close our file head back over to our form let's say for appending we don't need to prove to you that we're going to overwrite a file because we did that in the other one before appending click save and do or rather three and four click write it back to our folder open the file so we're just going to keep on going until we give it a, a new line character we're going to keep on writing to the same record in our text file so this was our second video on creating and writing two uh, sequential text files for Microsoft Access VBA. In the first video, we used uh, methods that did not uh, require objects. In this video, we used the file system object and additional objects below that. Uh, both methods we used used the text, text stream object. As usual, I'll have a link in the description down below to my blog and the code listing that we have shown here. I hope you got something out of this video, and thanks for watching.